What's going on, people? It's your boy, Mr. Controversy, here on the Three Point Conversion YouTube channel, and this is my NBA journal. I know I've been gone for a minute, but hey, a lot of big things going on. You know, I have a blog talk radio show now, which is called the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It airs on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on blog talk radio. So, but anyway, let's get to the NBA playoffs. Second round. Hey man, it's it's this is when it counts. I mean, yeah, the first round count counted too, but we have some real matchups besides. I mean, the LA Clipper, San Antonio was the only real matchup in that first round. But anyway, second round, let's get it going. I have to give my analysis and why I think this team will lose or win. So let's start off with the series that started today. Both series. So we'll start off first with the Atlanta Hawks versus the Washington Wizards. It's not fair for me to say who I think will win or who should win or should should lose because the series already started. But I, I will say this. Before the series, I thought I did say Atlanta will win it in six. This is why I thought Atlanta will win in six. And then I'll tell you after today why what would happen or why they sh you know why they should win or should lose okay so the reason why i had atlanta winning in six is this is a very good matchup washington is playing well while atlanta they started to find a groove the last game of that brooklyn series so i look at the washington wizards you know they have great players but i think uh when i look at washington wizards to me besides the chicago bulls they have everything you want and a starting lineup. You have a point guard that runs the offense that can get you anywhere from nine to 13 assists, who's gonna set you up and put you in scoring positions. You have a shooting guard who can score the ball, who can shoot, who doesn't take bad shots, and is very active, running, running around, so your, your backcourt looks good. Then, Let's go to the front court. You got a center and Nene. I don't. I think Nene play is listed as the center and Gortat is the power forward. But either or, you got the two big men. You have Nene, who can, you know, he plays hard and aggressive. He can drive to the hole, take it to the basket. He's not really a play with my back to the basket, but at the same time, that his first step is quick. And, you know, from time to time, he can shoot the jumper. Gortat, he's going to rebound. He can shoot the little 15-footer. He's active on a pick and roll. I mean, they're tough to deal with. Then you have Pierce. As, you know, you have your veteran leader, your clutch player. So with that alone, they have a nice little bench. You would say, yeah, I got them beating Atlanta because of the matchup problems. We know Horford can't guard Gortat or guard Nene, we know Millsap can't guard Gortat. So you think, hey, matchup problems, we, we should get them. We, that, I mean, Washington should get them. But this is why I say I have Atlanta beating Washington, or why I said it before the series started. It's because what about the matchup problems on their offensive end versus Washington's defense? Gortat and Nene, they can't keep up a guard Millsap and Al Horford. Millsap, can, they spread you off, first of all, so Millsap can shoot the three. He can shoot the jumper, but then he can take you off the dribble like a small forward. Whether it's going to tie or Nene, they can't deal with that. And then Al Horford, he can shoot that little 15 to 20-foot jumper, one of the best mid-range jumpers in the game, but yet still he could do the pump fake and take you to the hole. So it's almost like who has the advantage? And as you saw today, now, they didn't score any. I don't think he scored a point because, you know, the fact that he had a deal, he had five problems early, but he had to deal with Millsap or deal with Al Horford. So it kind of took him out of his comfort zone. Now, T, my problem with T is this is why Atlanta might lose if they don't get it together. T does not come to play every game. You have Schroeder on, off the bench. I love Schroeder. Schroeder come in. He going to the hole. He playing aggressive. T, 
he just sometimes, sometimes he's going to go to the hole and play up to his potential. But then you have nights where he just laid back and it is turn, he'll turn on and turn it off in the middle of the game. So that, that's hurting Atlanta, you know? And then you look at it like this Atlanta, you can't keep shooting threes. It was one time in the game, I think, fourth quarter, early in the fourth quarter, third or fourth quarter. Atlanta was up by 10. So it was up by 10 to 12. And I guess they were going for the knockout punch. They shot seven straight three-pointers. Missed them all. But my thing is, if you're not Kyle Corver, why are you taking the three? DeMar and Colonel, I might, I might give you the three because you're hot right now. But Al Horford shot two threes. Stop it. Come on, man. What you doing? And T shot two threes. A shot of three. He, he was killing you with the three-point selection. You know, Millsap shooting threes. That's the time when you need to go inside. But again, if you got a point guard who's not running the, running the offense, I mean, what you think is going to happen? And I had Atlanta beating Washington because, like I said before, I think I thought Washington was going to fold. I didn't have Washington in that Toronto series. I said they were capable of beating them, but just because I think they were full, I don't think they have the right coach. But they proved me, proved me wrong. Um, see what they see if they prove me wrong again. Now, the Golden State Memphis series before the series. Hey, they don't call me Mister Controversy for anything. I had Memphis winning in six games. Now, this is before Conley was slated to be out you know, how many games he will be out for. But he ha might have a chance to come back in. Now, the reason why I said Memphis, I love Golden State. I love what the MVP, which we just heard, congrats, congrats, Steph Curry. But, you know, he's a beast. Clay can shoot. You know, Clay's going to play off, play great on offense. You know, he can, he's a very good defender. And you just have an active bunch. Draymond Green, you have an active bunch. But the problem is going against Memphis, like today on Sunday, they shot the three and they made the three-pointer. They, they did. They were hot. But let's say if they miss them, which they will, because they're not going to be hot every game. They'll probably miss – they'll probably have an off game, three off games as far as shooting. You know, Curry probably be on with Curry. But when you got Barnes and Draymond shooting threes and Iguodala – and they're not going to hit every three. And they're not going to hit most of their threes. So that's just the law of averages. You know, that's how it goes. So if you're playing a team like Memphis who controls the boards, controls the paint, even though Golden State scored more in the paint, which was shocking, but Memphis controls the paint. And then the fact that they play very good defense, they play great defense. Golden State plays good, great defense as well. But Memphis, they have that grinding type of, you know, offense and team what they like to weigh on you in. It's like a heavyweight boxer. Until we get you to the end, that's when we go for the knockout punch. So if Conley comes back, and like I've always stated, if Conley comes back, you know he's going to be wearing that mask. And we know that mask has power. Think about it. On Rip Ward, Rip didn't want to take it off because he went off with the, um, with the mask. Then Kobe came in, he was scoring 40 with the mask. LeBron wore for a few – few games. He even tried a black mask and he came in and he did his thing. And then Westbrook, Westbrook turned into a triple double machine when he put on his mask. So it gives you powers. So if Conley has it on, go to stay watch out. But honestly with Conley, he runs that offense better. When he drives to the hole, he can go to the hole. Even if he go to the hole to create, but even if he goes in the hole to score and he doesn't score, the fact that if he goes to the hole, lays it up, misses the shot, but with him driving to the hole, you bring a bogey off his man to come contend the shot. Then, if he misses the shot, that's when Zebo or Gasol, even though they already dominate the boards, that's when they come in for that tip in or, you know, grabbing the rebound. So that's why I said Memphis winning in six. Today, like I said, Golden State was hot, and I expected that. I didn't expect Memphis to win the first game, you know? So. They might not win the second game, but if Conley comes back in this series, I, I have Memphis winning in six just because of the defense. Now, go to the um, Eastern Conference, the matchup we wish we could have saw in 
the um, NBA Eastern Conference Finals is Chicago Bulls versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Of course, we all know Kevin Love is out for the series. Jarrison is out for two games. So who do I have? Well, I'm going to go ahead and break down the series with Cleveland, the X factor. In this series, it has to be Tristan Thompson. And I even say a veteran. No, I Kyrie. I say Kyrie. I'm sorry, Kyrie and Tristan Thompson. Why Tristan Thompson? The fact that now you have to come in and step up. I thought he was going to be a big factor anyway coming off the bench because he always plays well against the Chicago Bulls. But now you're starting. So you have to get used to playing those 34 minutes, 36 minutes, you know, because you're going to play heavy minutes now because you're going to have to. I mean, they're thin. But the problem, well, and let me talk about Kyrie. With Kyrie, Kyrie never plays well against Derrick Rose. I don't know why. I, I, I don't have an answer. But every time he plays against Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose usually has gets the best out of him. I don't know why. There's just both ends. He just, I don't know. Now, you put Aaron Brooks on him, he going to come in and he going to kill Aaron Brooks or whoever else you put on him, Kirk Heinrich, whatever. But when it comes to Rose, for some reason, he doesn't play that well. I don't, I don't know why. So he's the X factor as well. But my thing is, Cleveland, with missing love, we all know he's going to – it's not the fact that you're going to miss the 19 points. It's not even the fact that you're going to miss the boards. You're going to miss, you're going to miss all of that. But the key factor is he's not spreading that defense. You know, when you have Love, Love sitting at the three-point line, Joaquin Noah has – Joaquin Noah has to come out and defend Noah – I mean defend Love, which he can – more he, he can do better than most power forwards or centers, but still, he has to come out and defend love. So now you bring it out, you, you're bringing a shot blocker out of the paint. But not only that, with love being able to shoot the three, he, it'll create space for everybody else. So when LeBron goes in, he can go in. Even with love, he can pump fake, then go in and get a nice layup or mid range jumper. I mean, you're missing that. J.R. Smith, he missed, yeah, he's going to miss two games. But when he comes back, J.R. was hot during the regular season. People, I hear people, a lot of people saying, hey, J.R., he didn't, you know, he, he didn't play like he played with the Knicks. He, he's better. Nah, it's not that he's better. He, he, his, his role is different. Before it was Carmelo, and with Carmelo having the ball, it was disrupting the offense if J.R. come down and shoot a 32-foot three-pointer. You couldn't do that because – Offense runs through Melo. But now, JR is getting shots because LeBron is passing it to JR versus Carmelo passing it to JR. But JR still loves to take deep shots. He's been hot lately. But if you notice in the playoffs, especially game one, he went like what? Four for 16, something like that. And what happened? He was like maybe two for nine, if that. From three-point line, I just know J.R. Smith is still J.R. Smith. He's going to chuck him. He's like a John Starks. If he makes him, he's going to keep shooting him. If he misses him, he's going to keep shooting, you know, and they give him the freedom to do that. So I think he can kill you more than he can help you. But if he hits him, definitely he can help you. Now, with the Chicago Bulls, you come in, people want to say, oh, when they put LeBron on Derrick Rose – what they what the Bulls gonna do then? Well, it's a totally different th- team from you know 2010. Now you have a Jimmy Butler who can drive to the hole, who can get a shot any way he wants to get a shot. He can shoot the jumper, he can drive to the hole, create contact, the foul. I mean, he's a bona fide superstar now. You still have Gasol. Now, if Gasol stays out there and try to shoot them 15, 20 foot jumpers, Bulls in trouble. He needs to get to the hole and pound Tristan Thompson or Mozgov, whoever's guarding, he's get to the hole and dominate. If he does that, then Bulls can't lose. Derrick Rose, like I said, they'll probably put, they'll probably put LeBron on Derrick Rose. And I hear some people say, well, they'll put Shumper on, on um, Jimmy Butler if 
LeBron is on Derrick Rose. Well, first of all, Derrick Rose is smarter. And then I don't think Jimmy but I don't think Shumper could guard Jimmy Butler like that. But Derrick Rose, he has to play smarter. He can't turn over the ball. The Bulls can't turn over the ball. But the Bulls bench is deep. We know they're deep. But the fact that Miritic has to have a good game, he's an X factor. Miritic, Gibson has to control the paint. And the Bulls just have to play confident. And I have the Bulls winning in six games. Uh, I can see it going seven, but six games. Then the other series, you have the um, L.A. Clippers going against the Houston Rockets. And this is an intriguing, an intriguing matchup just because you have two teams – that I don't – even with Houston, Houston has a couple of players come off the bench like a Brewer or um, or Josh Smith. Even the um, backup point guard, I can't think of his name right now. He's nice. But at the same time, I don't call their bench a very good bench. I mean, they have a decent bench. And we all know Clippers, their bench is not that good. That's why I said it before <laughs> that I picked, I picked the Clippers to win in seven, but I also said when it went to seven, before the game I was saying on my radio show, I said I, I have Clippers winning, but I almost would rather see San Antonio because I think they will benefit from going, you know, going to the next round because Clippers doesn't have a bench. They don't have a bench. But they might be able to sneak, sneak by and – Chris Paul is able to play, and he's um, close to 100%. Blake plays the way he's been playing. They might have a chance. But Blake definitely has to be – he has to be um, very aggressive. You know, he can't settle for the jump shot. Play like he played in that San Antonio series. Now, with Dwight Howard and the matchup with DeAndre Jordan, that's going to be an interesting matchup because the fact that both players are similar, except for Dwight has more offensive game. You know, he has more of a, a better offensive game. But they're both similar. They dunk, they rebound, they shoot free throws poorly, and they're high-energized guys. So who's going to get the best of them? Who's the most athletic or who's going to take advantage of the, others, of the other's weaknesses? So – that's the most – to me, those two are the X factors coming into this series. Is how we're going to play well or is DeAndre going to play well? Who's going to control the boards? Because you know Harden will do what he do. You know Chris Paul, is, he's going to do what he does. So it's going to be an interesting game. I mean, you've got two nice coaches. I still give the edge to Doc. But we've seen Mikhail come out, and he's made some great choices. Um Josh is another X factor. You know, if Josh is going to be the Josh who made great plays like he's been doing, passing the ball, distributing the ball, playing good defense, or is he the Josh that's going to settle for the high art air ball three-point shot? I mean, it, it just depends on that for Houston. Those two players, Dwight Howard and Josh Smith, and it's funny how ironic that they play together in AAU ball, but with the Clippers – I think that Jamal Crawford has to carry that bench. He has to come in and he has to average 19 points a game for the Clippers to have a, a real chance. And if he can do that, which the only thing, only play I could see stopping him is a reason, you know. So he needs to come in and get that 19 points a game and dominate when he comes in. Because I don't expect Austin Rivers to have more than what Two good games, probably one good game. That's it. Big Baby, I mean, he's solid, but like I said, they're thin when it comes off the bench. Turk is old. So, and um, the big man, I can't think of his name either. It's late, y'all, so I apologize. But um, he he hadn't done anything. So, guy with a ponytail. Came from Philly and Sacramento. But he hadn't done anything. So, the – that bench is thin, so 
Jamal Crawford has to have a big series. We know Chris Paul won't get his. We know Blake is going to get his. But Jamal Crawford has to have a big series to get them guys rest, to give Chris Paul rest. But, again, for that series, I have Houston winning in seven. It seems like Clippers love to take the series all the way to, to the seventh game. That's why I say I haven't gone seven, but I have Houston winning because I don't think no one's going to stop Harden. And I think Howard is going to be the big piece right here. I think he's going to come and play well. And I have Houston winning. So there you have it, folks. So I have I have Atlanta. I had Atlanta winning, but I still, I still say they're winning six. But I'm not too too confident about that pick. I have Memphis in six. I'm I, I'm still rolling with Memphis. I think they can turn it around. I have Chicago in six. And even though it could go seven, but I have them in six. And I have Houston winning at seven. So once again, it's three-point conversion channel you're watching. This is my NBA journal. And again, you all can follow me at Mr. Controversy21 on Twitter. Um, also, Go ahead and check my radio show. Go to Blog Talk Radio. You search the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge, and we'll come up. And we air on Saturday mornings live at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And also, you can go in and listen to the archives later on. So I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the playoffs. I'm out.